Hello, this is Hans Forschner with Napkin Engineering. This is a short video in regards to uh, mapping measurement data with the sound plan version of software 7.1. Um, I want to do a quick introduction and the first step is uh, we have to enter the point uh, points where the measurements were um, our measurements were taken sound level meter readings uh, either from the OSHA standpoint in a refinery or in a, in a manufacturing area or in a community setting. So the first thing is we need to put in the points. So we go into the geodatabase. I have a situation already set up and uh, the situation is called uh, measurement location right here. I open that up and uh, here is my lo measurement location. So this is a line a def uh, generic line defin uh, defining the measurement location basically in the sequence that the locations were measured. I have uh, a lot of times an Excel spreadsheet that has all the measurement data the sequence that, that was saved on the sound level meter so what I'm trying to do is uh, to generate the same sequence of coordinates so I can match that later on with the measurement uh, data in the Excel spreadsheet. To enter these coordinates, uh, the best thing is that either you have an aerial map or a uh, some sort of a DXF file where you have the geometry. Here we can uh, have an aerial map like this here, where you put in the, the measurement locations, or uh, something more like this here. It's more and more a basic uh, geometry setup. Uh, to input those aerial maps, again, on the fundamentals bitmap, we can load these bitmaps and then uh, assign the coordinates to scale these bitmaps. I don't want to go through that. So for right now, I'm just showing you, kind of like we have on the general, we have the line object. And then we basically go to, from each point to point. We enter the point number as elevation uh, above sea levels. And go to the next one, the point number two number three, and so on, number four, number five. And now if, if you have uh, uh, other point numbers, you could also put in other point numbers and you don't have to follow the sequence. Uh, you can do the sorting within uh, Excel then and just sort by your point numbers and then merge that with your measurement data. So it doesn't really matter. It, you don't necessarily have to fill in uh, or enter the data in a, exactly the same sequence as long as you know what the point numbers are for each of these locations. When you're done, we export the data. Let me delete this and the export is over File, Export, ASCII Geometry. This will generate a, a comma separated or semicolon separated text file. Uh, so as, so save as and in this case I want to save it as uh, measurement location line input with noise data. So I'll click on save right here, save, and uh, well, in this case it's overwriting an existing one, so that's fine, okay. And with that, uh, we are basically done with uh, entering the coordinates. So I can close the geodatabase, and the next step is we want to open up uh, the text file. So I open up Excel, and um, so let me open it up. And here we have uh, the selection of delimited that we want to have uh, the files uh, delimited. Let me just double check here. Open. And so we have the text in the limited file. So we have X, semicolon Y, semicolon, the point number, and so forth. So I go next, I'm the delimited, next, semicolon, and next, and that will open up the Excel spreadsheet. So here we have our Excel spreadsheet. If you had a separate folder uh, or Excel file with the uh, raw data from uh, your measurement or sound level meter, you can uh, merge these two files and uh, again if the sequence is not correct you can sort that again on the data and you can like sort that by the point sequence. In this case it is already in the right sequence. 
I put a header information at the top, point number, and then here I want to put in my LEQ data, and the LEQ data that could be data that uh, that you basically bring in from uh, from the other uh, data set, and uh, and uh, in this case I'll just ex extrapolate that all the way for the other points. If you have other data uh, with a sound of meter, a lot of time you get spectral information. So you could have additional information with, for example, 500 hertz, 1 kilohertz, and so forth. And uh, I'm just duplicating that, so this is basically ex extra uh, extrapolated for the other columns. But uh, you can have as many columns as you uh, wish with uh, data, uh, especially if you have statistical data, spectral data. You may want to look at different uh, contour maps to show hotspots uh, for different frequencies or hotspots uh, in regards to uh, or just the background noise levels. Finally, we save this. I'll save this as a uh, text delimited file. In this case, I'll save it as and then we save it as input with noise data. And I'll write it. Yes, yes. I close my Excel. I don't have to save that. And uh, finally, we need to get into the graphics in SoundPlan to present the data. So I open up graphics, and the first thing I want to do is I want to show you kind of the extent of kind of what what you can do with uh, the uh, measurement data, how you can incorporate that into SoundPlan. And for that, I'll open up the examples right here. And these are different examples of how you pr can present the, the results. So here at the very top left, uh, we have uh, a con colored contour map. I'll select this map. So we have several maps in this, uh, in this view. And uh, this map uh, consists of, if I go into File Selection Manager, I right-click File Selection Manager. It basically consists of a situation that has uh, the buildings and so on uh, entered and the measurement locations. And the measurement locations here, in this case, I'll, uh, is basically uh, selected out of the text file. That's a text file that was saved in uh, earlier in Excel. And as soon as you select that text file, let me uh, move this out and uh, select the one that we, that we just generated. And in this case, uh, you have the header information, the title row, uh, for the program, that's the information about the headers of each of the columns. We can define where is the X data, so the Y data is following the X uh, column 1, so this column 2 is the Y. And we can do the point numbers, we can do the LEQ, that's the first data column, and the 1 kilohertz would be the last data column. So with that, we have all the data defined, and we click OK. And now we have the selection of what data to, uh, to present. There are different other parameters here, interpolate uh, to optimize for decibel levels. And then here we can also clip an area. So if you had took measurements outside an area that you have that is of interest, you can define a calculation area and then basically set the uh, limit of, of the presentation or the contours here just by selecting yes and then selecting whatever contour uh, or calculation map that you want to use, for example. So here, calculation area, and then it would basically only show uh, the area within this calculation area. I don't want to do this here, so I'll click OK, and we'll click OK again. And this is uh, now with the data that I generated earlier, the contours for, for this data set. Um, the views can be changed. So in this case, the views uh, are changed under the map object types. So the map object types have all the controls in regards to how data is presented. So under results, we will find measurement map. And so here we can say how you want to show the Bezier type, how the contour lines are smooth, um, and all kinds of other parameters. In what sequence it will be drawn, that may be of interest. And then here we have main intervals, in this case fill intervals, or don't fill them. We can use scale colors, so they, basically the contour lines are not shown as a black line, so, but they are shown as a 
scaled colors with a um, you know, whatever color expressing a certain decibel level. So at this point, I want to just go through this here, uh, the other examples here. Uh, this map here uh, doesn't show any contour lines, but it uh, shows the uh, points, the actual measurement points. So they are turned on, and they are also showing as a scale color with a, in this case, 20. We can make it a little bit bigger, 25 millimeter size. Take over, and then here we have, uh, we see the measurement location with a dB value. All right, and go back. Down here we have the same view, except that in this case uh, we don't show the aerial map up. Uh, what happened there? Uh, that's I don't know what happened here, but uh, we can go and look at the um, file selection manager again. The situation, the measurement data, and in this case um, map object types, we are showing the points. And we are showing the main intervals with color scale, uh, so no filling of the, uh, the colors in between. If we'd like to get additional one decibel lines, we can go on the additional lines, turn them on. Uh, we can turn them every one decibel, and then also show them as with uh, scale colors. All right, so here we have now additional lines in between. And then finally, here on the bo bottom right is measurement plus predicted level. This is a, a different file selection. And this file selection, we are actually uh, using a formula. So this is on the grid operation. And on the uh, grid operation, we can uh, select uh, existing predicted map with measurement map. So let me kind of show that. Uh, so here we have file selection operation, so we have a grid noise map. In this case is number 15 for our generator prediction. And we select that and uh, add energetically or log adding the measurement location data. And with that, here we have the actual formula. So grid map number 15, assessment number 1. And then we add that to the uh, measurement data. Uh, column number seven, and that is, for, I believe, the LEQ. So it adds these two numbers together, and then here we are finally seeing a measurement map plus predicted level. Uh, so here, comparing that to uh, these levels here, you see that uh, we have a little generator in the back of the building that affects the, uh, yeah, the area behind the building. Anyway, that's uh, all about uh, mapping uh, measured data, how it combines with predicted levels, and uh, what other kind of combinations of outputs you have. I will just, uh, as last thing, I want to just show from scratch how things will be uh, generated in regards to a map. So I'll generate a new map here. Uh, I don't save it. And uh, I'll just generate a new map. I'll first uh, select a uh, situation. I'll use the backup uh, generator, we go to the measurement map, I select the uh, noise data, the text file, I'll select the uh, X location, point number, data, and end data, click OK, I select the LQ, I'll let it uh, do an outer scale, click OK, and click OK. We have uh, automatic scale, we have the legend, Typically, I delete the legend, and here is the data that I entered earlier in the geodatabase. To make the modifications uh, in the, on the scale, we'll go to the outer scale button, change the increment to 5 decibels, maybe starting at 40, and uh, we can leave that as is. Uh, yep, and click OK. And then uh, under map object types, we can make the changes in regards to how it's presented. So we can uh, fill, change the fill lines and make the colored lines, additional lines, uh, maybe uh, smaller lines right here. And uh, the main buildings, I turn off the hatching, turn on uh, the coloring of the buildings. And here we have all the measured data. All right, uh, don't forget to save the, the file, 
And uh, that ends my uh, presentation again on how to map um, um, how to map measurement data and how it's integrated uh, within the SoundPlan software. Thank you and uh, bye for now.